Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Accenture Interactive. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. CUBE live coverage here in Las Vegas for Adobe Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, my co-host this week. Two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is Glenn Hartman, North America lead for Accenture Interactive. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So you guys are doing some great stuff around the creativity piece, doing great customer experience implementation. We had a great walkthrough from a lot of the folks from your organization. You know, designing up ideas and products, delivering them and then operating them. Nice model. Yeah, thanks. Is that, the, is that your business model? Is that, how does that work? What is, what's uh, Accenture Interactive's business model? Well, I mean, Accenture Interactive is really about one thing. And it's about creating, delivering, and running the best experiences on the planet. We help our clients do that for their own customers. And when we talk about experience, a lot of people have different definitions for that, especially at the conference yeah. here. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily an experience of a website or a mobile app or the UX as people use it. It's really any way a brand uh, engages with a customer. It's not just marketing either, it could be sales or customer yeah. service, loyalty, anything, any way a brand promise can be uh, delivered to a, to a customer. One of the things I've noticed with you guys is that there's a talk track and um, thought leadership around a new creative, and new creativity in Adobe, obviously with the software that they have and now the cloud, you're seeing in the marketplace, we saw this at Sundance two years ago, a new kind of creativism organically coming into the marketplace with more channels, to direct to consumer, whether it's B2B or B2C, you would now have new kinds of mechanisms to take product, whether it's apps or content or movies. You're starting to see this democratization really starting to happen. How is that changing how you guys help customers? Because now they now have new capabilities. They can tell their story in a different way. They have access to new kinds of channels that weren't there before. How is that changing the business in your opinion? Uh, in a profound way. So, I mean, everybody knows that marketing is inextricably linked to technology and data, everybody knows that. But um, when we are thinking about the new creative and the ways that you can tell stories and create experiences, we look at experience very differently. Uh, I mentioned before that it was all about all the different touch points and the ways people interact with the brand. But when we look at experience, we call it the big E. And the big E actually stands for empathy and it's understanding how to define what a brand experience means to that customer and defining success in the terms of that customer. And, and you know, Jeff and, and, and John, it, you guys are not defined by your data set or what you bought last week. You're, you can be very different types of people in different situations and understanding ways to empathize with you in the moment and having experiences change in the moment and having uh, creative play a part of that and data play a part of that is, is the big uh, aha, it's a, it's a new way of looking at things. And the last part of that too, in the big E, is about emotion. So when you have a big brand that has some com emotional connection, you know, you love this brand for an automotive or you love this hotel chain or there's some brand a connection you have, how do you have that connection flow through every touch point? And, and, and data and technology can enable that, but it's really empathy and emotion that's the driver. How do you get empathy and creativity to work together because you now have an accelerant with data? You mentioned getting to know people's, uh, empathizing with them in the moment. It's contextual. I could be having a great day or a bad day or driving my kids to school. Whatever's going on with me, it, certainly there might be some data out there. Sure. How do you get the creativity and the empathy to work together in your mind? How do you see that playing out? Well, I mean, out? It's, that's the nice part is more than ever, um, we have different data sets that can help us do that. i just give you a couple of examples. Um, instead of understanding how to market to someone so they'll buy the next product, uh, and basing that maybe on their demographic or maybe basing it on their preferences, you hear all these terms in marketing for years, and you can understand what they bought, Instead of understanding that, why don't we try and look and use data, which you could easily do today, to understand why they bought something. So it could be something as simple as like a, I don't know, CPG example. Uh, maybe you have shampoo. And you could say, well, they bought these kinds of things before, so maybe they'll buy that shampoo. But if they know that, you know, maybe Jeff is eco-friendly, or John, maybe you're more into things that, uh, 
maybe you buy that shampoo because you care about animals and they know they don't test them on animals. Or maybe it's something more about experience that that particular shampoo um, won't make your daughter cry when you shampoo her, her hair and it helps that experience. That's the reason why it, it actually helps me. You're empathizing in the moment with something that is meaningful, that you care about. It's not about a better deal or better price or, or some kind yeah. of feature. It's something actually about you. More meaningful. It's Much a deeper, more meaningful. meaningful interaction data set. Yeah. Is that because there was no data before? Or is it more, there's more signals potentially to get exposed to that? Because that's a, because those are hard data points to get. I mean, to find the why, is a holistic kind of perspective. It's true, but I mean, I think it's more of a mindset. The data's there. Yeah. But the mindset has been different. Over time, people have been looking to technology. Every buzzword in the world used to be big data yeah. and personalization. Yeah. AI. And then now it's AI and machine learning, and I'm like, well that's great. And they're all wonderful enablers, as I yeah. said. But it has to be driven by empathy first. So it, it all starts, I mean, we've been saying this forever, customer centricity and the customer comes first, but really, I, I mean, for real. Yeah, if you, you start to use those data sets uh, and have the mindset has to be a CMO or a brand manager or someone who actually is advocating for the customer and they are willing to say, no, no, I don't need big data. I don't need all the data. I need this gold nugget part so I can speak to John. It's interesting, Glenn, as you say, the emotional part of the big E, all, all I think of is, the, is the, the old Coke commercial, right? We're all one world yeah. together and we all cry and there's some great McDonald's commercials. Right. But when you talk about um, getting beyond that to the, to the empathy, I, I can't help but think of kind of the whole purpose, purpose-driven, mission-driven companies. You know, kids coming out of college want to work for mission-driven companies. Yes. We heard it over and over in the keynotes. You know, we're not a product company not even really a service company, but we're committed to, to an ideal, to a mission. Be, be partners with us, be our customer, and let's have a relationship that goes so much deeper and longer than any particular transaction. Is that kind of, that it's, tie it's, to that, it's, that it's everything? It's a big part of it, absolutely. Uh, now, the interesting thing of what you said is that people are tied to a purpose and maybe something that's meaningful in a, in a broad sense, absolutely. And that's a wonderful place to start and you can start to align products and services in that and way. I think the way you talked about like shampoo and you know, animal testing, right? Was, it's a good one. Right. But the next one is really getting a little bit more down to you. So I think all that is, is great, but really understanding what you need in the moment because what happens is, is it, some of those things may change. If you are shopping at a grocery store every Saturday for your family, and um, you're used to doing that, your attitude there might be different than when you're shopping when your kid is sick, and you got pulled out of work, and you got to get there to get their prescription, you're into speed, and, and you're stressed in the moment there, versus maybe on Saturday, you're like, oh, I'll try some new coupons, and try some new things, and go buy the little tasting station. It's actually behaviors that you want to understand in the moment uh, that is uh, a big part of, uh, of that as well. But the, the key thing too here is, let's think of this, when you deal with empathy, it's not just getting to know all those things, even if it gets to that level, it's actually changing the way marketers think about talking to and communicating and relating to customers. Even the language that they use. Uh, I mean, think of it today, I mean, still people use marketers are, they're marketing to people. It's, uh, let's acquire customers. Let's convert Let's customers. win developers over. Good. Like, I mean, you don't win developers over. I mean, what was the last <laughs> time you guys were real excited about getting converted? Okay, it's not a fun experience, yeah. right? So if yeah. you even change that mindset and you say, let's market with someone, or let's, let's help them. Yeah. Can you actually create experiences that are useful and helpful? Not about conversion and not a business metric, but success that's defined by the customer. How are you guys playing this out? Because this is really kind of ties on multiple threads. I mean, there's a whole other community angle too. People belong to communities in context to their life and they, they engage, and when they engage, there's emotional connection to a group. Yep. Right? There's, and some cohorts, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the groups, but their friends and colleagues or whatever it could be. You guys are deploying this with customers. Take us through a use case, uh, day in the life of empathy deployed into the, how you guys do business with the big brands and, and what are the success, how do you make it happen, what's the engagements look like, how does someone do this? So they just wake up one morning and say, okay, I'm going to have more empathy. Now, they actually call you guys up, but what happens? Like, what, take us through what, yeah. 
how sure. the sausage I mean, I can, is made in this. Well, I mean, I, I can give you a little bit of an, an example of how this starts. We've been talking a little bit more dramatically about sick kids and yeah. and 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 and. and, and and uh, testing on pets and, and, and animals and things like that. Uh, not testing on pets, can you imagine? That'd yeah. really be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the psychographic of the a user's individual, well, personalization's hard, right? So, well, I mean, the whole point of this is that when you really get into the mechanics of how this works, I'll give you an example, it's a little bit less dramatic, okay? So it's a, a telecommunications company, a telco company that's selling, uh, you guys know what Triple Play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so you have, um, uh, it's a cable and internet and, 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 yeah, and, phone. and yep. phone, right, yep. all together. It's like a commodity product, right? It's, there's no emotional thing necessarily. Yeah. But uh, in that game, uh, if you can uh, just optimize certain parts of the journey, you can make a big difference, right? So uh, we got a benign request from a marketer to uh, say, listen, uh, we do a lot of paid search. Can you help us with this one product? Just if you move it, even like 1%, it would be significant to the company. But when, so we, okay, we'll do that, and, and it worked out, we go in and help them do their search. But because we're thinking about experience in a broader sense, we said, well, let's, let's do it more. Let's make them be able to transact or engage in multiple ways. Well, you could, you could sign up for the service through email, or maybe there's click to call, or click to chat, or you could even walk into a branch and do it there, or maybe through the call center, right? And so it's all working together, omni-channel, yeah. all the fun yeah. words you want to use, and you're leveraging different technologies to do it, and people. So the way this worked was, people were coming in through search, and then eventually a lot of them were converting in the call center, so it was all working. And you think, well, that's great. Well, it wasn't great to the company at all. They were very upset. The people that were buying the media were really bummed because they couldn't get the attribution or the credit for the thing that was in the call yeah. center. So they came up with a great idea. They said, okay, take the phone number off and take the click to call off and we'll force the customer to convert in our channel. Of course, there's a brilliant company with great people and rational thinking prevailed and they didn't do that. But they said, well, what do we do? I said, well, you're going to yeah. need a multi-attribution model to be able to help yeah. you do that. Okay, but that's not enough because you also need a new sales incentive and commission structure inside the call center because those people are getting paid on that, but since it's such a low commodity product, that's not yeah. going to work, you have to change that, so that's a new sales kind of thing. Then you, wait, they can't talk for another three seconds to that person because you'll bring the margins down, you got to get them back All into the, the digital channel. All the internal metrics get screwed up. That's right, <laughs> so there's new business processes now, new operating model, new skills to get them back into yeah. the digital. So all of a sudden, this benign request from a marketing team, say, can you optimize my paid search, becomes new business transformation. Okay, now because that brand manager had the guts, to say, I'm going to advocate for this customer. This customer wants to come in through this channel and they want to convert over here. Yeah. And we're going to actually change the operating model, the sales structure, I had to call the sales lead, I had to call the CFO and the COO, and yeah. we're going to make this happen. We're going to change the way we do business on behalf of that customer. That is a, a way it works. Well, and I can tell you, we see this all the time in marketers all the time, that they're so married to their website analytics yeah. funnel, that that's all about who gets credit. Coded URLs and, and the customer experience is brutal. <laughs> it's totally. like, I'm non-linear on other sites. Right. I'm all over the place. I don't really need to go to the site every day. Right. I'm going to only go there it's when I need to. It's not about me. And the thing we were talking about before, if you're um, grocery shopping and you're ups upset on that Tuesday and you want to get it out for your kid, versus the, the nice leisurely thing we talked about on the weekend, there's a whole nother set of outcomes and KPIs you have to deal with. If you went into that supermarket on Tuesday and they figured out a way to get you in and out fast and just get those two or three items you needed for your kid, that is a failed trip. According to the grocery industry, you need to be in there longer, they want yeah. to sell you the certain items. in the back. That's yeah. right, <laughs> totally. <laughs> that breaks the whole model. Yeah. But it's wonderful for you. You'll right. shop there forever because of that experience. So what you're getting at, the experiences the are changing the business models of companies. That's, That's the right. bottom line. You got it. If you put empathy at the for, center, yeah. that could be a driver for the transformation. That's it, empathy is the driver, absolutely. Now you need to have the emotional connection to all that stuff yeah. uh, to help. Also internally, CMOs don't need to just be relevant to end customers, they need to be relevant to the enterprise. They need to be relevant to the CEO. I, I can second, I hear the screaming and kicking and screaming right now. Glenn, that's great, but man, that's a heavy lift. We, I don't know if we can do it. How do you, how do you answer that? Because I can see a cultural reaction, the antibodies will come out and attack that notion because it's scary because now like, whoa. Yeah, well I mean, it is hard. 
but the good news is, is that we see, even at this conference, and a lot of our clients are coming over to do that. There's incremental ways to get there, but I'll make it simple. So, the, the advantages are, we said, there's new technology and new data that allow you to do some of this stuff, right? That's great, and you can see a lot of them consolidating. Right? A lot of the stacks all now have content and analytics and commerce and all that and, and, and there's nice ways that they come together. And that consolidation can help. And there's other ones that can handle different data sets and that helps too. And there's automation yeah. and... But the thing is that what people miss is one of the ways to accelerate this is to add a human-centered approach to how you actually yeah. create the experience internally. And what I mean is, it's not enough to consolidate the data and figure out yeah. that gold nugget, and not enough to do with technology, you have to do it with humans. Yeah. It's a human-centered approach. So we are bringing in integrated teams of humans that are pulling all this stuff together. It's someone who understands strategy, maybe. Yeah. Someone uh, understands creative. So and they're priming the pump, is. basically. They're priming the pump, getting yeah. everything. But they all the sit together. They sit together, the analytics people sit next to the creative people, that sit next to the technology people, and they work on it as they design the experience. You don't do a strategy project, and then do a, a, a road map, and then do an RFP for technology the waterfall, enablement. The waterfall does not work. But it's beyond yeah, even yeah, waterfall yeah. versus agile. This is actually yeah. taking humans and consolidating that thinking, new skill sets at the center in like an incubator way to do pilots, to do prototyping, to do things. If you want to create that new experience that we're talking about in any of these cases, you got to hand the CMO some kind of thing they can bring to yeah. the team and say, look, here's an app that would enable this, or here's a pilot we could try without boiling the ocean to actually create an experience that would move the needle, or whatever lame corporate analogy, just make more money and yeah. get some okay. decent <laughs> results yeah. in. Yeah. Get a beachhead, start yeah. small and iterate That's through right. it. Glenn, great insights. This is a great talk. We'd love to get you back on theCUBE and sure. drill down into this. It's kind of design thinking combined with execution on the, on the front lines with the customer center of the value proposition. Great conversation. Before we end, just do a, give a quick plug for the business. What's going on with Accenture Interactive? Um, how's the business going? What are your goals? How many people are working there? What's the geographies look like? Give us an update. Sure. Uh, thanks for asking. So Accenture Interactive is uh, enjoying its third year as uh, being listed by IDH Magazine as the largest uh, digital agency in the world uh, and the fastest growing. Uh, we have uh, coverage uh, in an, a truly integrated global delivery model uh, that hits every part of, the, of, the, of every market. And we're so excited to um, have this growth um, because it's a way to show that the market is truly yeah. interested and being experience led, and the way what we're defining experience. So we're seeing more and more yeah. clients moving from some of these incremental changes yeah. to really trying to put the customer at the center of what they're doing. And uh, you know, Accenture Interactive believes in this model. Yeah. It is, it's very much in some ways we, we call it a, a new kind of provider, like an experience agency for lack of a better term, uh, to help companies uh, drive that transformation. And it's done with people, and technology, and we've been on a, a tear recently. Um, all, most of our growth is organic, but we also do lots and lots of acquisitions to make these capabilities come together. All the creativity, yeah. and the design, and the strategy, and the, the tech, yeah. and the run of it, is all in one integrated team. And that is very, very helpful when you're trying to do some of the things we've been talking about. And you're, you guys, I think, are on the right way. This customer wave is really real, because with digital, the customers are in charge. They control their data, they're now going, the shift is happening, we're starting to see some visibility into it. It's really going to impact the economics, process and business models. So I think it's just the beginning. Congratulations. Yeah, it really is, thanks. And we're so excited because some of the client successes are, it's truly transformational. Some of the things we've done at Carnival or uh, Marriott or, or Subway, I mean, it's a whole different kind of way of looking at experience and it's really helping people. It's not just for, it's good for the business, but we're really changing people's lives and helping have experiences be meaningful. Yeah. It's been wonderful uh, and fun for us. Glenn, thanks so thanks much for sharing this insights here on theCUBE. Hey, thanks. We're getting the data here live at Adobe Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Stay tuned for more coverage after this short break.